Welcome to this week's edition of the America First Policy Institute Weekly Rundown, where we bring you insights from our policy experts and leaders on the latest news and events. Today, we'll be highlighting key moments from our experts' media appearances, focusing on the critical issues facing our nation. Let's dive in. First, we have Brooke Rollins, CEO of the America First Policy Institute, who appeared on Fox Business. She discussed the growing incitement of violence that threatens our nation's core values. In her segment, Brooke emphasized the dangerous consequences of years of inflammatory rhetoric, stressing the need for stability and safety to maintain the soul of our nation. She highlights how divisive behavior, encouraged by some leaders and public figures, has led us to a critical crossroads for the future of America. Uh, this is the result of that years of inappropriate and unresponsible speech. And we're now getting to the point where it's almost an incitement. It is an incitement of violence. You combine that with the mental instability, I think, of some of our population yep. and who believe that they are being called to, again, to your point, save democracy. Here we are. We are at the absolute crux of the soul of the this country and, and the, the American people have a choice to make and it, it seems to be very clear. Next, Chad Wolf, former Acting Secretary of Homeland Security, appeared on Fox Business Channel's Cudlow. He addressed the importance of a threats-based approach to national security. Chad discussed the differing threat levels faced by high-profile figures, particularly emphasizing the unique security challenges surrounding President Trump. He argued for allocating resources based on actual security threats to ensure the protection of our leaders, highlighting the need for a more dynamic security approach. The sitting president gets a very different security package, different security bubble than even the vice president and certainly former presidents, right? I agree with the congressman. This needs to be threat-based. President Trump definitely has a different threat picture than Vice President Harris. Not to say that she doesn't have threats. Right. It's just a different security and, and threat picture. And so the resources need to be allocated as such. I heard Secretary Mayorkas just 20 minutes ago say it's a similar level than what Vice President Harris has. That's not answering the question, right? You need the same level in protection as, as President Biden, right? Because if President Biden goes to that same golf course, mm -hmm. guess what? That perimeter is sweeped yes. several times. The before. outside, too. The outside, outside the inside, yes. outside, several times before he ever arrives, right? And that's based off of just him being president, not actually the threat picture against him. It's just that's what they do for presidents. The model of the service, particularly now, and Trump is different, needs to be reconstructed, right? They, they are very regimented. I love all the agents out there. They're great. Leadership is very regimented in how they look at this because they are concerned. They haven't told me this, but I know this. They are concerned about the precedent that this then puts them under when other former presidents require a security package like this. And you so, think Retired Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg joined Stuart Varney on Fox Business to discuss recent military tactics and the evolving landscape of warfare. General Kellogg praised Israel's innovative tactics in dealing with security threats, emphasizing the necessity of constant deterrence to maintain stability. He pointed out that having both capability and the will to act is crucial in deterring adversaries and ensuring national security. Is Iran, Hezbollah and Hamas, are they now deterred? Well, I think there's a, it, deterrence is constant. You can't just say one incident is a deterrence. You have to stay very, very heavy on it. And it comes to two parts. And when it comes to deterrence, you have a capability. Can you do it? The people, the equipment, the man, uh, the, the weaponry. And you also have to have the will. And if the other side, the adversary knows you've got the, the former, which is a capability, but they also know you have the will to do it, then deterrence is, in fact, in, in effect. And that's what the Israelis have done. They've pushed back on, on the Iranians. They know that. But it's a constant battle. They're going to have to keep doing it. But I will tell you that it keeps them up at night. And as I said with the pagers, it really showed where the Israelis can go. The ability with Mossad, and I'm sure the leader of Mossad tonight or today, David Barnea, is really has a big smile on his face. And that great little unit, is, and again, it's called Unit 81. It's like Q that you saw in the James Bond movies because it makes all this stuff. It makes it work. And it's a brilliant organization and did a brilliant thing on this attack. Really well done. Matt Whitaker, former acting U.S. Attorney General, appeared on Newsmax to talk about the security measures for President Trump. Matt Whitaker highlighted the pressing need to strengthen Secret Service protection for President Trump after recent assassination attempts. He called for increased resources and more robust security protocols to prevent future threats, underscoring that the current measures are not sufficient. The, you know, the law enforcement uh, that were there 
you know, with a Secret Service agent that 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 uh, engaged uh, with this gentleman, and and obviously the, you know, the police in the, the counties that were able to bring him uh, and arrest him and 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 make sure that no Thank nobody God. was harmed. Uh, that's yeah, on, on on an interstate highway. I mean, that's amazing. And so you add all that together, and you know, the bottom line is the Secret Service at the highest levels. Uh, are still failing. They allowed another rifle to get within uh, firing distance from President Trump, and I just think they have to increase resources protecting him. Lastly, Michael Falkender, former Assistant Secretary for Economic Policy, shared his views on economic policy with Larry Kudlow on Fox Business. Michael highlighted the risks of the Federal Reserve engaging in an easing cycle, warning that this could raise inflation expectations. He pointed out that the current problem lies with inherently inflationary regulatory and tax policies. Falconer emphasized that relying solely on the Fed to manage these issues is insufficient. Instead, he called for coordinated efforts between the Federal Reserve, Congress, and the administration to align monetary, fiscal, and regulatory policies, ensuring a balanced approach to addressing inflation. We're going to have big declines in rates month after month after month. That would be a real policy change. It would indeed. And so that would lower expectations of long term interest rates. And it's long term rates that have a much greater impact on whether it's corporate borrowing or it's it's mortgage rates. That would you help sell? Us. I, w I would sell bond. In other words, if the Fed goes on an easing cycle, all right, quarter, quarter, quarter or more, it's half point, half point, half point. To me, that would raise inflation expectations. It absolutely, Bad for bonds. Right, right. And it's back to something that EJ just mentioned, which is that the fundamental problem we have is that regulatory policy and tax policy are inherently inflationary. And we then seem to think that the Fed is going to come in and right. solve all of these problems. Instead, Powell needs to be able to go to Congress and go to the administration and say, look, I can't do this on my own. We need to stop having these working in conflict with each other. And instead, everybody have monetary, fiscal and regulatory policy all going in. And, Modern in, in, monetary theory, man. <laughs> Spend whatever your keister wants, pump in money supply, cut interest rates. Only trouble is it produced 9% inflation and ordinary households are still pay I mean, prices don't come down. No. For, right. what, what prices right. are going to come down if the Fed cuts by a quarter of a point? Huh? Explain me that. Silence. I guess <laughs> that's the end of the segment. That wraps up this week's America First Policy Institute weekly rundown. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you found these insights from our policy experts valuable. Let us know your thoughts and feedback in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and share this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss an important update on the America First agenda. For more information on our policies and initiatives, visit AmericaFirstPolicy.com.